Hello and welcome back to my model railroad. I'm working on a new layout design right now and I have some extreme slopes, you know, things greater than 3% and I'm curious as to what my different locomotives and rolling stock will be able to accomplish. So I'm going to run a series of tests. Uh, for this test, uh, slope or you know percent grade will be simulated by using a 2x4. I've leveled it ahead of time. You can see here that I have two pieces of flex track wired up and on, I will be raising this far end over here to simulate the grade. I will use three Pennsylvania coaches as the as my train the load to be pulled. The three locomotives we'll be testing are kind of our extreme cases. I have my 484 locomotive with tender. It's very heavy, but actually not very powerful. Um, a very, very fast Ofero switcher locomotive. It has a newer Mark II coupler, and I'll be using this box car to adapt the Mark II coupler on one side to the old-fashioned horn hook coupler that the Pennsylvania coaches use on the other side, and then a standard diesel locomotive, which is very heavy. Uh, the motor and or the engine needs some work as it accelerates a little bit slower. I think it's probably just old and dirty, but it is the heaviest locomotive and also one of the most powerful I have. So I'll just be rating the different locomotives and their ability to first hold the cars with friction, uh, pull the cars up the, the ramp, and then also the speed of their deceleration will be looked at in a few of the cases. Four and a quarter percent grade test, three Pennsylvania and a 484 locomotive. Max power. Reverse with half power. Three Pennsylvania cars, 484 locomotive on a six and a half grade test. This is full power. Switching to half power until the engine engages for reverse. Nine and a half percent grade test. Three Pennsylvania coaches, one 484 locomotive. Full power, the engine is not able to pull the cars up. Nine and a half percent grade test using an additional box car as a coupler interface between the Mark II couplers and old horn hook couplers. The engine is not powerful enough to keep the cars from sliding backwards down the grade. Six and a half inch grade test, three Pennsylvania coaches, one box car to adapt horn hook to Mark II couplers and an 040 switcher locomotive. The locomotive is not powerful enough to keep the cars from sliding backwards down the rails. Four and a quarter grade tests using three Pennsylvania coaches, one box car to adapt horn hook to Mark II couplers, and an 040 switcher locomotive. The switcher locomotive is not powerful enough to pull the cars up the slope. In fact, Static friction is not enough to keep the entire train from sliding backwards. 4% grade tests using three Pennsylvania coaches, a box car to adapt couplers from horn hook to Mark II, and an 040 switcher locomotive. Max power, the engine does not move. However, static friction is great enough to keep train from sliding down the rails. 3.77% grade test, same conditions. Static friction will not hold the train steady. 3.5% grade test. Three percent grade test, same conditions. Train is held. 2.5% grade test.
train moves slightly. 2.5% grade test with one coach removed. Engine is powerful enough to ascend slope. However, extra space is needed on reverse until stopping. 9.5% grade test. I've changed out the switcher locomotive and box car for a heavier diesel locomotive. You can see that friction is great enough to hold the train from sliding down the slope. I'll be accelerating the train slowly up to maximum power. Okay, so in summary, we've seen that with a relatively small train of just three of the longer passenger coaches that our maximum limit for the switcher locomotive is around two and a half percent which is a little bit disappointing just due to the uh relatively shallow grade although for the most part the switcher locomotive here is only going to be used in a rail yard or a freight yard um, which would be at zero percent or as close to zero as we can get it grade uh, it doesn't really bode too well for if I want to use a smaller switcher locomotive on the rest of the layout. I would obviously have to uh, shorten the trains by an awful lot in order to have the switcher locomotive be able to pull any type of train. Uh, the larger 484 locomotive, uh, this is pretty much the largest locomotive that I can run on anything with an 18-inch radius curve. Uh, it, it already doesn't look that great. It struggles a little bit, but is able to traverse it. Um, this is probably the largest, I mean, this is currently the largest steam locomotive I have in my inventory, and I wouldn't recommend running anything larger in 18-inch radius curves. Uh, that was able to do, um, I'll have to go back and watch my videos, but I believe it's about 4% without, um, before it really just wasn't able to do anything else. Um, the diesel locomotive here, I was able to do much more ex extreme grades over 9% for this length of train. However, I was hoping to model more steam than diesel in my layout, kind of looking for more like the transition era. So although the diesel did work, it's probably my least favorite option. Um, another thing that's a little upsetting is this train really isn't all that long. It's only, um, it's only about 36 inches long or one piece of flex track. So, uh, you know, certainly by no means as long as the trains I've been hoped to, to run on the layout. So I might have to go back to the drawing board a little bit and see what we can do. Um, the grades were obviously dictated by uh, minimum clearance between rails. Uh, what I was hoping to do is get four inches uh, modeling from top of rail to top of rail. Uh, the reason why four is your, your clearance is supposed to be around three inches, but if you see over here, the cork the flex track on the cork board on any type of support is around an inch high so in order to get over three inches of clearance you need four inches model between the two of them on your computer software uh, i can go into the computer software a little bit more on a different video i did download a new software and you know, and uh and licensed it um i just i didn't want to go into it too much until i decide on my layout but this whole grade and clearance problem has really kind of given me a little bit of pause on uh, what the layout's going to look like because I'd, I'd like to make it as intricate as I can, but also want to make sure that I'll be able to run all the trains I w that, uh, that we want to. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I welcome any comments and, you know, please let me know if you've had problems running, you know, various trains and uh, also what grades and clearances you use on your layout.